So, Dr. Bianchi, thanks so much for taking time to visit this morning. Uh, so excited to talk with you about your research and all of the things that you have going on here in Boston. I was particularly intrigued by a paper that you had published a couple of years ago now called Non-Invasive Prenatal Testing Creates an Opportunity for Antenatal Treatment of Down Syndrome. Would you just give us maybe a brief overview of what that paper was conveying? Sure. Um, really, we've been working on prenatal testing for quite a while, and our focus is on field treatment. We think that there's an opportunity, really a seven-month opportunity, between the time of a potential diagnosis of Down syndrome, and that diagnosis could give the pregnant woman an opportunity to take a medication that will positively impact upon fetal brain growth and development. So we're testing that concept in a mouse model right now. So what observations have you seen in mice then that uh, lead you to believe that there may be some possibility for antenatal treatments? We've been looking at a mouse model called the TS1 CJE model of Down syndrome. Um, we've been uh, looking at those mice and comparing them to wild-type mice. And we've shown that the differences in the fetal brain are more significant than the dif differences in the adult brains. So we hypothesize that we could test in a mouse model giving various medications to a pregnant mouse carrying pups half of which on average have the model of Down syndrome and half of which do not. Interesting. So if there are treatments that are possible to give prenatally, the, the result over the long term I'm sure is unknown because uh, you still have obviously a third copy of the 21st chromosome present in the metabolic disturbance that that implies. So. Um, I'm sure that there's no way of knowing at this point what the long-term effects might be, but it looks like it's possible that birth outcomes might be able to be improved in some way. Well, we don't know that. What we do know in our mouse model, however, is that some of the medications that we've been testing definitely cross the placenta because the pups that have Down syndrome have signs of improvement, specifically in some standard neurobehavioral tests that we give to the mice. Um, we've tested the mice both at the adult stage, but also we're looking at neonatal mice to see if there's any evidence of immediate improvement. Our focus is really on the brain and on improving learning and memory. Um, we will not be able to isolate out a third chromosome in a human being. We also won't be changing the facial appearance or the physical appearance of a child with Down syndrome, but our hope is that by giving a pregnant woman a medication prenatally, that that medication will affect brain growth, development, and connection between nerve cells that are so important in establishing the basic architecture of the brain. Well, it really sounds like incredible research that you're doing. I was fascinated, too, to read in your paper, again, that you've identified, is it 311 different genes that are affected off of, I, th I think you said maybe five of those genes are, reside on chromosome 21 and the others are genes that are off of chromosome 21 that are affected in some way by the... So we started our research actually in human pregnancies. So in leftover amniotic fluid from women who had had amniocentesis for medical reasons, um, they were very gracious to give us their leftover amniotic fluid. And within that fluid are little fragments of genes that we could study and compare the gene expression. What is the fetus doing at that point in pregnancy? These are living fetuses. And compare that information to living fetuses that turned out to not have Down syndrome. And it turns out that there was, there was a significant difference, like you mentioned, there were, by our criteria, uh, over 300 differentially regulated genes. Um, but the fascinating thing was very few of them actually physically mapped to chromosome 21. So the implication was that the extra copy of chromosome 21 was affecting genes all over the human genome.
And so we hypothesize that we need a medication that will treat all of those downstream effects, not just specifically one gene on chromosome 21. Yeah, and we, we often think of Down syndrome as being a very complex genetic condition, and I think that just reinforces that fact, right? It's, Absolutely. It's not as simple as just... Uh, one gene, one enzyme, no. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, a much more complex... Yeah much more complex it condition. It is very than... complex. But the, the beauty of the time that we live in right now is we do have complex ways of addressing these problems and computational biology really examining all of these genes and how they interact with each other is extremely important to understanding some of the problems that the children have. Fabulous. Well, it's a remarkable time, I think, for those being born with Down syndrome. There's so many developments that have happened in really such a recent period of time. I think probably within the last three years, there have been some of the most significant research developments in research that have occurred at any point in the past. I would agree, and I'm also very gratified by the attention that the research is receiving because it means that people are very interested in the work. And we're very grateful to the Lejeune Foundation for for funding our specific study right now, looking at fetal brain magnetic resonance images in ongoing pregnancies. Well, we're delighted to be able to work with you on that, and we believe very much in the importance of your project, and we wish you the very best of success as you continue, and we look forward to staying in touch and seeing what further developments happen in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.